is, there it is. What's up, family? How are y'all doing? I'm here. A little bit late. Hold on. Ah! I'm a little bit late, but I'm here. I tweeted that I'd be popping off at around this time. I, I was um, going to start at 7, then I was stuck in traffic on my way back to the Crizzo. And I tweeted that I'd be on in 45 minutes, and I'm here. 45 minutes, and I'm here. So, welcome to the Tariq Elite Show, everybody. Now, I'm going to eat a quick snack. And we're here. We're making it do what it do. What's good with the family? Today's show is brought to you by HiddenColorsFilm.com. I want you to go to HiddenColorsFilm.com right now and get the movie Hidden Colors 1, 2, and 3 if you don't have it. And people are coming up in the chat room as we speak. Where's my phone? Yes, indeed. We got a lot of stuff to talk about. Let's so say, you say, what's up with the video? Y'all didn't like, um... <laughs> You didn't like Kunta Kinte West? <laughs> well, y'all hating on Kunta Kinye West. <laughs> the nigga said I got the PE teacher t-shirt. I uh, know, man. I got the um, the substitute teacher button down. Like I'm about to teach sex education. Speaking of substitute teachers, did y'all hear about the teacher? I think it was out there in D.C., it was a substitute teacher in D.C. Sister, cute little sister. You know, wasn't no bomb-ass chick, but she's a nice little regular cute little sister. She's 22 years old. Substitute teacher, substitute teacher on the first day of school, this fool-ass chick. First day of school, they had a pep rally. One of the 17-year-old students macked her ass up. She's in the class during the pep rally. She, her and the student in the class by themselves. She in there sucking the damn dude's dick. She gave the student a BJ. <laughs> she gave this kid a BJ and old dude recorded it. He secretly recorded it. Then he was a football player. So he started showing the tape around school. He's showing the tape around school. Now, sure enough, you know they're going to tell everybody. Now, one person knows this, one person. So they tell everybody, so the word gets out, so the school administration finds out. So this chick, she's been arrested, charged with a felony. The, uh, her career is done. Her career is done. But... This just goes to show, I'm going to have to do a whole show about this. I'm going to have to do a whole show about this. The, the youth culture, people want to stay young. People don't want to grow up. This woman should have known better than to let a 17-year-old mack her up while she's in the class sucking damn dick. Fucking up her career. Trying to still be ratchet. Sometimes, fellas and, and, and ladies... It's time to let the ratchet shit go. You ain't got to be ratchet all the time. All right, look, you, you, you got a job. You, you're getting a career started. Leave the ratchet shit on in the hood somewhere. But let's forget about fucking a minor and all that. Again, we got so many young-minded black folks. No, we're not just black people, period. I ain't going to put it on black folks. Because you got other teachers from other races, these white teachers be doing the same thing. But not on the first day, damn. Not on the first day. <laughs> God damn, lady. This lady didn't even get the her time card checked out correctly. She didn't even earn a full hour's pay until she had to put a dick in her mouth. Good Lord. But come on, man. We got to leave the ratchetness. Leave that shit somewhere. Dude, and I've always said, these teachers are real big freaks, man. A lot of these teachers are some of the biggest freaks. But that was a dumb, bum-ass move right there. That chick need to be hoeing somewhere. That Sometimes you just need to be off hoeing. 
That's why I'm not a hoe hater. If you want to be a hoe, you need to just be a hoe hoe. Don't be a teacher and then start hoeing in class when the no, 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 no. Go ahead and be a real full fledged, stomp down, bona fide hoe. She needs to find her some folks so she can get some instructions and hit the track or hit something. If she's doing that, you just got you can't go a full work day without sucking a dick. You need to start selling your ass. You in the wrong line of work. You should not be a teacher. Oh uh, yeah, Charles Barkley. Yeah, I saw Charles' comments. I saw him. Yeah. What 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 did Charles say? Charles said that. What did Charles say? Is un educated black people who give other black folks a bad name, something like that. You know, I, I can't go too hard on Charles because I know his family, you know, some of his family are connected with my family. Is that I can't go too hard on Charles, you know, because look, I, I lived in Leeds, Alabama, so I know all of his folks. His folks know all of my family. They still out there. A lot of my family out there. So, you know, I, I've been very skeptical about talking about Charles. You dig? What's up, um, Tariq Nasheed fan? There you go. Oh yeah, the the coon. Oh yeah, the coon. You call him a fat ringless slob. That's messed up. You know, I, I don't know what we're. We used to call him Wade as a kid back in the day, growing up. Wade, that's what everybody would call him. Ah, uh, you know what? I, a lot of stuff I think he's saying for for shock value. You know, a lot of black folks, they say, well, look, man, all the resources are with the dominant society. I need to say what the dominant society wants to hear. So that's the game that a lot of folks, a lot of black folks play. That's the, yeah, when, when and a lot of black folks, man, are just really, Hopping on the coon train today earlier, and I, I get on the coon, the 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 super coon in a minute. I put up a um, a post earlier on Instagram and my Facebook page. Instagram is Tariq Elite, and my Facebook page I think is Tariq Elite as well. You guys need to follow me there. Let me get my Skype line up while I'm talking. Halloween is next week. And let me tell y'all something. I want y'all to just mentally get ready. I want you to mentally get ready, family, because what's going to happen next week, you're about to see white supremacy in your face. A lot of black folks, you've been in denial about it. Next week and all through next week, you're about to see a lot of white supremacy blatant in your face. I'm telling you, because Halloween is coming up and Halloween gives people a pass to do and say what they wanted to do and say all year. Okay, what the, hold on. So this is my conference. Hold on, let me see what's going on with my Skype. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. I'm trying to log into my Skype. Hold on. Hold on one second. My Skype is tripping. Hold on one second. Hold on. My Skype is telling me to do a new a new password. Hold on. And I don't know why it's telling me to do that, but I just did it. All right, return to the Skype app. All right. Hold on one second. I know somebody tried to get into my Skype account or whatever. All right, I just logged in the Skype. The phone number is 818-850-5404. That is the number, 818-850-5404. That's the number. Uh, but what I'm saying, next week, Halloween, you're about to see a whole bunch of racist Halloween costumes. What you're going to see, you're going to see a bunch of people, and mark my words, 
dressed up as Darren Wilson and people dressed as Mike Brown. You're going to see a lot of that. Just like the year before, last year, you had a whole bunch of people doing the Zimmerman, Trayvon Martin. You're about to see a bunch of white supremacists do the Darren Wilson, Mike Brown Halloween outfits. There are already a lot of white supremacists doing Ray Rice. And I put up a picture of a little kid, a little white kid, Basically, in blackface, they put some tan makeup on him. Let me find the picture, and I'll show you the picture right here. There was a kid, a little white kid, had on a Ray Rice jersey. And, you know, the, for, for those who don't know, Ray Rice was uh, accused. Well, he, he had gotten to an altercation with his, his fiance, his wife now. And he punched her, knocked out, and drug out of the elevator. So the white supremacists, they had a field day with that. The white supremacists had a field day with that. Let me um find a picture for you and I'll post it up here right now. And there are a lot of white supremacists already dressing up as Ray Rice and the beat up wife. And now they got the white children doing it. Now let me show you, let me show you this picture right here. This is an adult couple dressed up as Ray Rice and the beat-up girlfriend. And, hold on one second. And there were some people on my Facebook kind of saying, well, we shouldn't look at this as race because there are black people who dress up like that too, which is not true. That That's not true. I've yet to see a black person dressed up in a Ray Rice outfit. Because, see, the thing is with black people, that's not how we do humor. That That's not funny. We don't find stuff like that funny. We don't really joke about stuff like that. We don't dress up like people who got beat up. Or we don't dress up like people who got killed. That black humor, we don't do that. That's not what we do as a form of humor. Now, the white supremacists, they do it because they do it because they find it funny that it's offensive. That's the joke. The offensiveness of it is the joke. So I know black folks don't do shit like that. Like here, here's an example of, a, of an older white couple dressed up as Ray Rice and his girlfriend. So, so the, the male had on blackface and the woman had on blackface and she had on a black eye, had a black eye on. Ha 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 ha. And now they have their children in on the action like this. So these white supremacists got their child because it, I'm looking at the parent. The kid, you know, he's doing whatever the parent is letting him do or making him do. The parent made this kid put on tan blackface, a jersey with a black shirt that's supposed to be his black arms or whatever, and a black doll to drag around like he just beat the doll up. And y'all think that white supremacy is something to play with. Y'all think that, white, and I'm not offended, I'm not even shocked. I'm just like, are you waking up to white supremacy? Again, it, it takes a lot for black folks to wake up. Black people hate to see the truth. There's a lot of white supremacists out there who really despise you just for your blackness. And there's thousands of comments. I put that picture of the kid up on my Facebook page. There's thousands of comments and there were some black folks, and, and some of these people, I hope that they have fake trolling accounts. Because some of these people are clearly undercover white supremacists with fake accounts. But some of these people, I think they're really black folks who are making excuses for white supremacy. How about don't knock your wife out, then you won't be a Halloween joke? Well, the thing is, just because he knocked the woman out and he got punished for it. But still, I'm going to still be on alert for anybody making a joke out of it because you don't make jokes when out of white people who get into situations like that. Why make black folks the butt of the joke? How about that? We're, we're not going around acting like Honey Boo Boo's family and that child molester that the Honey Boo Boo's mom was dating. You dig?
She says there's plenty of coons in there. Yeah, see, the thing is, we, we don't do stuff like that. We're not, nobody dressed up as Nicole Brown Simpson and OJ. Nobody did that. Nobody, did, we, we, don't, we don't think like that. Nobody dressed up as Charlie Sheen and start beating up women. We, we, don't, we don't do that. Yeah, we, we we don't we don't do that. We don't yeah, like my man said, we don't wear like ISIS costumes where we're beheading people. We we don't do that. We don't make fun we don't laugh at a a, a tragedy. We we don't do that. That's just something we don't do. But that's how white supremacy works. White supremacy is a religion. You know, white supremacy is a religion. Oh cool, they got the thing where I can ban people very easily. Oh cool. Cool, they got the chat room fixed. I like that. Oh, they got that straight. Oh, good. Oh, I got Wizard out of here. So Ustream finally fixed the chat room where you can ban people very quickly. Yeah, but we don't laugh at other people's tragedies. We don't do that. That's something that black people do not do. Also, another thing black people do not do if there's a murder, we don't send people who are murderers money for murdering somebody. We don't do that. There's, there's a certain humanity we have. We just don't do that. So if a, if a black cop were to shoot a white person, even if we don't, we don't know the whole circumstances of the case, we're not going to send that black police officer money. Or when people like to talk about what about black on black crime, we don't send black gang members money for killing another person. We don't support them financially. We don't make excuses for them like y'all do for the Zimmermans and the Darren Wilsons and the cops that killed Eric Garner. We, we, we don't do that. There's a certain humanity that black folks have. So I know that trying to compare or say that black folks dress up like these characters that's dressing up for Halloween, we don't do that. That's a lie. That's just not in our character to do that. But again, black folks need to understand how systematic white supremacy works. Black people need to wake the hell up and see how it works. And, you know, when Charles Barkley made those comments, they'll always promote black people throwing other black folks under the bus because the name of the game is to play this um, hide the racism game. That's the name of the game to keep black people confused as to what racism is. That's what we talked about that in Hidden Colors 3. Racism is designed to keep black people confused. So if you're confused about something, you can't form a defense or protective layer against it if you're being confused about it. And black people are constantly being told, what about black on black crime? And black folks, you're going to have to start shutting that argument down. There is no black on black crime. Black folks, whenever you hear that argument, you need to know how to shut that bullshit down. Somebody tried to come on my page with that. I shut it down in two seconds. I shut that what about black on black crime bullshit down in two seconds. Because truth be told, outside of a couple of gangs in Chicago, there's not a large plethora of black on black crime in America right now. Because first of all, people kill where they live. We know that. We know that. That makes too much sense. But just to really break it down, black people killing each other, that's on that's at an all-time low. That's at an all-time low. Outside of a couple of gangs in Chicago, which even in Chicago, the crime, the murder has gone down in Chicago, by the way. But outside of Chicago, you can't point to a whole epidemic of black people killing other black folks. You just don't see it. And I was talking to uh, a, a black, a seemingly black person who was trolling that nonsense earlier today about we were talking about this whole blackface thing and she was like, well, how can we mad at them and we be killing each other all the time, so we can't call racism when we be killing each other. I said, ma'am, outside of a few gangs in Chicago, where are we killing each other? What you talking about? 
oh, well, I live in Tallahassee and there's a lot. I said, ma'am, there were 12 people killed in Tallahassee, I think, last year. I think it's probably less than that. But from what I understand, there's about 12 people in Tallahassee who was killed. Ma'am, don't tell a lie. I, I, I know too much about stats and all that. Then she got quiet, which I, I think it might have been a, a white supremacist trolling. But the thing is, family, we need to know our numbers. So when people start hurling bullshit at us, we got to know how to thump that shit out of the park. Because the thing is, so-called black-on-black crime is over-exaggerated. You understand that? That black-on-black -black crime bullshit is over-exaggerated and it's over-reported and it's over-emphasized and it's not as heavy as people try to make it to be. That's just the way to get the white supremacists to justify hurting you and to get you to sign off on it. Because if you say, I guess we be hurting ourselves, so I guess we can't say nothing when everybody else do it. Yeah, you got to stop buying Jordans if you can't afford them. Yeah, if you can't, I mean, look, look. And, and the great poet, uh, Nikki Giovanni, she made a good point. If you cannot afford certain things, you, you, you shouldn't splurge like that. But look, I we got to understand, we have been deprived of resources. That's the name of the game. Black folks have been deprived of resources. So with black people, it gets to the state where we just want anything nice. Our mentality is, look, we, we can't get no house, no job. We can't get this. We can't get that. We can't get a car. Well, shit, let me at least get some nice shoes. I want something nice, something that I can brag about. Let me get a purse. Let me get a nice belt. You know, that's a, it's a plantation mentality. Now, when you have certain resources and you have an economic base, if you want to get all that fly shit, that's cool. That makes sense. But this is why a lot of times when there's like looting or rioting, the first thing people get instead of food and water and things like that, people start going for the flat screen TVs. People go for flat screen TVs and shoes. You dig? Instead of getting food, ammunition, weapons, and all that, niggas are getting flat screen TVs in Jordans. You dig? Because the thing is, if you've been deprived of certain things for so long, you want anything nice, anything that gives anything of value. And the thing is, sometimes that works inadvertently. Now, in the 70s, the rioting is really how hip-hop got started. How hip-hop, as we know it, how it blew up in 1977. Where are my old school New Yorkers? If you're an old school New Yorker, you know where, where I'm going. In, in 1977, there was a big blackout in New York. There was a blackout in New York City in 1977. Now, in New York, in the 70s, especially in the Bronx, the Bronx looked like a third world country. You know why the Bronx looked like a third world country? Because what was happening in the Bronx, you know, there was white flight, you know, all the white people moved to like other suburban areas. So a lot of the poor black Latino people were stuck there in the Bronx. And what happened was that a lot of slumlords went and got all of that property in the Bronx. They started buying up all those buildings, just like all those abandoned buildings in Detroit and all that stuff. And what they would do in New York, especially in the Bronx, they would buy these buildings and then put fire insurance on the building. So they buy the building dirt cheap, but they put a fire policy on it. And the policy would pay out more than the building was worth damn near. So what they would do, they would go get the heroin addicts or whatever to light these buildings on fire in New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All my New York people know where I'm coming from. They know this. They know this. They would burn all those buildings up in the Bronx and get the fire insurance money. So the Bronx was just toe up, man. The Bronx was just toe up. Yeah, they set the building. It looked like a third world country in the Bronx. So people had nothing. They had nothing to lose. 
So they were like, you know, we didn't have no resources. These buildings are burnt up. I mean, it's just like a war zone. So it's like, fuck it. We have nothing to lose. So there was a blackout in, in 77. And when that blackout came, cats start rushing these buildings, rushing these electronic stores and what people did because the disco scene was real heavy. So there were a lot of mixers and turntables and all that stuff. So brothers started getting all that DJ equipment. A lot of brothers started getting a lot of that DJ equipment. And right after that, that um, riot and, the, and the, um, the, the blackout in New York, all these hip-hop crews started coming up. Hip-hop crews started coming up all over the place. And yeah, that's how hip-hop got started. It, it got out there on a mass scale because there were so many crews out there because everybody had all this equipment now because the thing is at first the only people who could really represent hip-hop were the cats who had the equipment like dj hurt the reason why he was so known because he had this big sound system this big jamaican sound system so that's how he was known that's how he was so popular then bambada he was popular because bambada had all the equipment and all this stuff. And he was a good DJ and all that too. But the thing is, a lot of people, the very few people before that riot and before the blackout had equipment. So whoever had equipment, you were in the game. So now a whole bunch of people had equipment after that blackout and that birthed hip hop. So those cats, and also what, what I respect about the brothers then is that they got this equipment and they created their whole, they created their own culture with their own rules to their own culture. They created their own rules, their own guidelines, their own regulations to their own culture. Because they're like, look, we're not being accepted by the dominant society. We're not being accepted by the Studio 54 crowd. They don't give a fuck about us. So we got to do our own thing. We're going to get our shit popping in the park. We're going to get the DJ equipment popping. We're going to get some dances. Anybody can rock a mic. Come on here and get on the mic. Don't bite nobody's shit. Be original. Have your own sound. You dig? Yeah, I banned that dude. The the last snowman, I banned him. But again, man, look, because we're deprived of resources, we want nice things. We want nice things. You know, we want a nice bike. We want nice shoes and all that. So a lot of times, we don't value working on an economic base, we just value getting nigger trinkets, as well, as I call them, by any means necessary. What's up, Harlem? I heard about that. I heard about that. That's true, Demir, and that's our problem. Every time we create something, we sell it off. And not only do we sell it off, what happens is that because we don't have resources, when we do get something that can generate resources, we get bought out. I'm going to repeat that again. Because my man said we sell it off. But the thing is, what happens is that whenever we create something that generates resources, we get bought out. The name of the game is to keep black people as a whole away from resources. So every now and then, one of us or two of us or a handful of us will start building something that will create resources. They buy us out quickly. Carol's daughter. I was just about to go there, Terry. I was just about to go there. I was just about to talk about Carol's daughter. Carol's daughter, this this lady created her own hair products. It took off. A lot of black celebrities are on it. It took off. They just bought her out. How much did they give her? They just bought her out. The thing is, when we get some shit popping, they isolate us and buy us out so that we can't help the next generation. It was sold to L'Oreal. I bet they gave her a grip. I bet they gave her damn near half a billion, not half a billion, but damn near half a million dollars. Not half a million, half a billion damn near. If I were her, I would have got, got it for that much. If she didn't get half a billion dollars for that, her price was undisclosed. Okay, I bet it was. I bet it was. I, I can imagine what she got for Carol's daughter. But the thing is, when we get something, when one or two of us maneuver our way around the system, 
and we create something that's going to create resources, possibly for the masses of black folks, we get bought out. Just like BET. Hey, come on over here, brother. That's a great idea. Let, let, let us get you over here with us. Come over here, Dre. Those headphones are really popping. Come on over here. We got this bill. You're going to be the first hip-hop billionaire, brother. And I ain't mad. I'm not mad at nobody. I'm not mad at anybody. But I'm just showing you how they get down, how the chess game goes down with the dominant society. That's the chess game that goes on. The name of the game is to not have resources for the rest of the community. See, the thing is, what happens is people try to talk about Blacks holding other black folks down and all that old bullshit, like what Charles was trying to say, because they love to promote that. But the thing is, our best and brightest, what happens is that the dominant society, they look for our best and brightest in, in education, sports, law, all over. They get our best and brightest and then they pick them and isolate them. They pick them up and isolate them. Motown too. Motown too. That's another example. Motown too. Also, and when Dame Dash has a point with, with Rocka, Rockefeller Records, Rockefeller Records, they could have been a, a real, 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 real big powerhouse. But then they said, okay, we'll get Jay and we'll shower him with all of the acc accolades and praises and we'll make him the president of Def Jam and we'll give him this, give him that. So they had to shut that down and, and, and isolate Jay. So we have to understand a lot of times they get the best and brightest of our community and isolate them. And then they'll shower you with a lot of stuff once you're isolated. And that's the thing. When we're isolated and we're getting showered with a lot of stuff, no, nope, we're not going to complain for the most part. We're not going to be like, well, damn, let me, somebody's picking me to give me half a billion dollars. I ain't going to say shit, but they know they got you in a position where you better not give it to your community or other people who look like you. That's why a lot of times when cats get those big checks, they start talking that new black shit. I'm a new black person. Racism don't exist. They put that camera right in your face and start making you cop please. They bought Carol's daughter for $1.2 Oh, there you go. Oh, I, I shot low. Okay. I was shooting low. I was saying half, half a billion. Oh, they hit it for I knew it, it had to be. I knew it had to at least be half a billion dollars. It's a billion point two. Okay. All right. I was shooting low. I knew they gave her big money for that. Carol's door. My wife got Carol's door upstairs. My wife got that. We got that in the house. So Carol's daughter was popping. They weren't about to let her make all that money without them getting in the mix. They were not going to let her get all that money without them getting in the mix. Oh man. You know, Raven, you know, Raven Simone. Raven Simone gets big money. That Disney, all that Disney stuff, that's that was big money for Raven. Raven Simone is sitting on some real paper. A lot of folks don't know it. Raven Simone is sitting on some real big paper. So that's why you put a camera in her face. You know what? I'm not really African American. I don't like labels. <laughs> And they, the, the white supremacist is sitting in the back. Good, good. That's what we want you to say. That's what we want you to say. That's what they want you to say. Man, Raven is paid, man. She got, she got big paper. But again, that's why when cats get that paper, they start talking that new black shit. Because that's the trade-off. You you know the game. That's the trade-off. If we get you and give you all of this paper, come on now, don't don't go, don't don't get no ideas now. Don't you go helping no other blacks with that money now. You dig? But that's also a trick bag too. Uh, another thing they do. Because, again, the name of the game is to keep resources away from black folks as a whole. The dominant society plays a chess game with us. So what they do, once they pick out the best and brightest, especially with sports, this is very, very especially true for sports. That's why the movie The Blind Side, 
you know, they make it seem like, oh, we we just good old country southern white folks who just want to help this old black boy living in the projects. They see that he's about to be a football phenom. So now they get their hooks in him real quick. Oh yeah, we're gonna help you. We're gonna we'll we'll adopt you, we'll let you stay with us, because they know he's getting that football contract. Because they know he's getting that football contract. I haven't seen Bell yet. I haven't seen that movie. But the thing is, again, they, they isolate us. We get isolated. And once we're isolated, we can be controlled. And once we're isolated, especially the brothers, that's when they say, hey, meet my daughter, Becky. You dig? Because they're going to make sure they're playing chess. They're going to make sure those resources circle right back into the dominant society. That's the name of the game. Y'all, I, I, I follow the money. See, when I when I look at racial politics, I'm always looking at the money. Where's the money going? The money, the money. Where's the money going? And who's getting it? Who's not getting it? And the dominant society makes sure the masses of black folks do not get any significant resources. That's what we always have to keep our eyes on, the resources. Where are the resources going? Again, Carol's daughter, I, I, I wish she could have stayed independent with her. She was killing the game. But again, they start giving you offers you can't refuse. Why? Because you're not supposed to be independent. Black folk, you're supposed to always be dependent. The name of the game is to keep you dependent. Man, that sister should have stayed indie, man. I really wish she stayed independent. Now, that's absolutely true, Divine. Yeah, man. Dude. Man, I wish Dre could have kept that on some on an indie level. He could have made that billion himself. Because the thing is, what they let me tell y'all what the game is, and and when black folks start to independently make a lot a lot of money. That's that's a dangerous thing. When you make a lot of money and you don't need the dominant society, that's a that's a threat because then that encourages other black folks. And the thing is, you can do it. If you already got a product that's making paper and you damn near about to hit a billion of your own and you, you just got to put in that work, the dominant society, they sees that. They they see that and they say, "Well, shit, let me give you a billion dollars." You you can't refuse that. A billion dollars sounds great. But damn, if you got half a million already, don't trip on that. Just keep on grinding. So would I turn down a billion dollars for Hidden Colors? Well, the thing is, I probably, if now, because the Hidden Colors series hasn't made like half a million dollars or nothing like that, if the Hidden Colors series was making like over a hundred million dollars or whatever, I'm like, no, I just keep it going. But hell, even now, I, I I wouldn't sell it now. But if somebody said, we'll give you a billion dollars for the Hidden Color series, yeah, I'd do it. Then I'll make another series. i call that shit um, Negro Spirituals and do the same shit. <laughs> I, I'd get that billion and do the same shit and just call it something else. Shit. I'd get that billion and do the same shit with another movie, with another franchise. You dig? <laughs> huh. Yeah, I, I hope she does start other ventures. You know, I hope she does start other ventures. They probably got all types of clauses where she can't start another um, cosmetic line. You dig? But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm proud of my sister. I'm, I'm very proud of the sister who got that pop, and I'm very proud of her, though. I am. But I still would like, uh, you know, I would love to see us if we already got that momentum going, your product is already popping, um, shit, just keep it going. 
I mean, but who wouldn't take a billion dollars for a movie? I mean, who wouldn't? For any movie series. Because, hell, I can make a million other movies. I can make, I can, I can do movies all day. But even, even now, you know, that's why I keep the Hidden Colors franchise very independent. And that might be a thing, Rod, because, you know, I don't know if they're making people like these offers they can't refuse. Like, hey, motherfucker, you, you need to sell the company or we know where your mama lives. You know, I don't know if they're doing that. I don't know. But, you know, I, I wish a lot of these people would stay. You already got a momentum going. You can crack that billion on your own and still own your product. I saw that with, with Tyrese and Spanky. Hey, shout out to the brother Tyrese, the singer. You know, Spanky Hayes is a comedian and he was doing a radio show down at um, the Roscoe's Network. That's where Zoe and everybody used to do their show. And Spanky was making jokes and he, he didn't let people know he was making jokes. He, well, he was lying, basically, then said he was making a joke. But he, he, he was lying. He said that he was going for the it was him and Tyrese in the last running for the movie Baby Boy, and then somebody said, well, y'all, somebody need to suck my dick or whatever, and then said Tyrese got the role. So he tried to imply that Tyrese got the role for Baby Boy because he sucked somebody's dick. This is real niggerish, some real niggerish bullshit, man, that was really uncool. And Tyrese called him out on it, and then Spanky came back with, like, this video trying to mock Tyrese, and the shit was mad unfunny. That it was very corny. So that was a bad look for Spanky. Very bad look for Spanky. And the thing is, man, the dude was just doing some shit to get attention. And that's the worst thing you can do. And I've said this many millions of times. The worst thing you can do to a person who's not ready is to give them a lot of attention. Because the thing is, all that's going to do is let more people see how lame you are. And you're not ready yet. You haven't really polished yourself to be in the spotlight like that. All that's going to do is show people how corny you are. That's why when I roast a lot of cats, they fall off immediately because a whole bunch of people see how lame they are. Oh, yeah, he, he did a, 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 a coon, a super coon Sambo move, like, like, like Mr. Sambo. So that was a bad look on Spank. And speaking of Sambo, Sambo sort of moisture. And, and he's he's very upset now because I've I've destroyed his little career. What little career he had. He's very upset. And he has himself to blame. Sambo sort of moisture. He was trolling and trolling and taking shot after shot over and over again, over and over again. The fraud. He was taking shots, and then I finally lit his ass up. And just like the 48 Laws of Power says, I think law number 19, I think that's the law. It says you better know who you're dealing with. You don't start with people. You don't start with people who you don't really know how they get down. And you, people were warning, dude, hey, man, you might not want to fuck with Tariq. You might not want to mess with him. He's a career ender. And I've, I've ended several people's careers and his too. His career is over. I mean, his shit is done. Nobody really listens to him. His listenership has declined. Nobody takes him seriously. He's a joke now, and he knows that. And uh, he's doing desperate things. I think, didn't he tell people to harass my wife, my pregnant wife? He's telling people to harass my wife. He threatened to kill me. Do you know Crispy Sambo Sword of Moisture threatened to kill me? This asshole said that Nothing stopping him from coming to a free Hidden Color screening and taking his gun and sh shooting my punk ass. So this nigga threatened to kill me. He's threatening to get a gun and kill me. He said, be careful. Be careful for what? This coon ain't going to bust a grape. Nigga, get to killing. Sambo, since you that gangster, 
As a matter of fact, I got a, a, a screening coming up here in L.A., I think on the 15th of November. The OGs, give, they're going to call me tomorrow to confirm. They want me to talk to some gang members out here to do a screening and a lecture for some gang members. And I think that might be free, too. Some of the OGs want me to come through. They called me up and I'm doing it for the OGs. So that would be your perfect opportunity to come and kill me, Crispy. Since you gangster like that and you giving out death threats all on the internet, if you're about that life, get to killing. I'll let, I'll let you know exactly where it's going to be. Since you gangster like that, since you're going to do all this old gun talk and you got all this gunplay going on, because we all know you ain't going to bust a grape, nigga. And you should blame yourself for ending your career. Starting with a person like me, you ended your own career. He's like, and he's the, he's the, he's destroying me. He's taking my career away. I ain't got nothing to lose. All right, nigga. Get to killing then, nigga. Since you about that life. You dig? The dude is a clown. I don't know when I'm coming back to D.C. I got to come back to D.C. I got to come back to D.C. Oh, by the way, you guys ready for another episode of the um, the Crispy Puppet Show? Are y'all ready for another episode of the Crispy Puppet Show? If you're ready for the Crispy Puppet Show, this week's episode, everybody press one. If you're ready for this week's episode of the Crispy Puppet Show, everybody press one. Y'all ready for... <laughs> yes, indeed. All right. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Here's a brand new episode of The Crispy Show. You want to see a person who hates his face and you're looking high and low. Well, look no further and you're in the right place. Welcome to The Crispy Show. What up, everybody? What up, everybody? Welcome to the Crispy Show, everybody. It's your boy, Crispy. So right now, everybody, I got my ball spot covered up, everybody, because I gotta be incognito right now, everybody. And I gotta whisper, because I'm trying to creep up on this nigga, everybody. I've been getting clowned on the internet by a bunch of niggas, everybody. And I'm sick of all these raggedy ass niggas clowning me, everybody. So I'm going to the house of one of these niggas and I'm about to roll up on this motherfucker, everybody. Crispy ain't playing no more games, everybody. Shit is getting real out here in the streets, everybody. Oh shit, well, oh, oh shit, scared the fuck out of me, everybody. I'm just sick and tired of these niggas out here fucking with me, everybody. These niggas are fucking with me, everybody. He's fucking with me, everybody. And I'm tired of it, everybody. And one of these niggas live right here in this house, everybody. And I'm about to break in here and I'm about to get in his ass, everybody. I'm sick of this shit, everybody. Crispy ain't playing no games, it's real out here in these streets, everybody. I'm about to fuck this nigga up, everybody. Just wait till I find my way from this house now. Let me just find my interest, find the interest to get up in this motherfucker, everybody. I'm about to get in his ass, everybody. Shit, my tap shoes are so goddamn loud, everybody. God damn, I should have worn some sneakers. My tap shoes are making so much goddamn noise, I'm gonna get caught, everybody. But when I get up in here, everybody, I'm fucking this nigga up, everybody. I'm tired of these niggas, man. I'm trying to work, do my thing, and niggas are clowning me and fucking up my career, everybody. I can't live like this, everybody. These niggas gonna have to die, everybody. Keep fucking with me, everybody. Keep fucking with me. Oh. I'm gonna climb up in this window right here. Oh yeah, I'm about to climb up in that window, everybody. Hopefully my tap shoes don't make me slip down, everybody. I'm climbing up the wall, everybody. I'm going to that window up there, everybody. That's my way in, everybody. But these goddamn tap shoes are making so much damn noise, everybody. Get your ass, everybody. I'm coming to fuck you up, nigga. Keep fucking with me, everybody. Keep fucking with me. I'm getting that nigga, everybody. Yeah, 
everybody. I'm in here, everybody. I'm about to go get at this nigga, everybody. This nigga gonna get that work, everybody. I'm fucking that nigga up, everybody. I'm tired of these niggas in here fighting with me. Where, where am I, everybody? That must be that nigga's bedroom, everybody. I'm about to go get that motherfucker, everybody. I'm about to life, everybody. I'm a gangster in these streets, everybody. You fuck with me, this what you get, everybody. I run up in your spot and get your ass, everybody. What? Hold up. Oh shit, everybody. Everybody, I wasn't expecting that, everybody. Oh no, my cap shit was making so much noise, everybody. Oh, 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 Lord, everybody. Oh, yep. Yeah, nigga, I was in there, everybody. I almost had that, nigga. I was gonna murk that motherfucker, everybody. I was gonna murk him, everybody. But I went in that nigga's house, that nigga had like, uh, 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 seven pit bulls, everybody. That nigga had like 12 Rottweilers, everybody. I couldn't deal with all that shit, everybody. That nigga had sharks, everybody. That nigga had alligators, everybody. That nigga had piranhas, everybody. That nigga had poisonous penguins. Uh, 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 that nigga had a killer turtle. Yeah, nigga, a killer turtle, everybody. I ain't lying. Nigga, I almost sprained my ankle running, I mean, uh, kicking those pit bulls in the ass, everybody. I got out of there, nigga. I had to fight my way out, everybody. Man, it was gangsta as hell, everybody. Let the streets know I went out like a gangster, everybody. So right now, I'm about to go beat me a black bitch's ass, but that's how it went down, everybody. There it is. That is the latest episode of The Crispy Show. <laughs> that is the latest episode of The Crispy Show. Very good show. I love the crispy show. <laughs> How does it work? Oh, well, oh, 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 it oh, really oh, is. Oh, sorry about that. Sorry about that, fam. One second. And let me give you all the link where you guys can see the crispy video for yourself. Hold on one second. One second. Let me, um, let me, yeah. let me, let me make this video available for you guys so you can get it now. One second. One second so you guys can get that now. You go to the Crispy Channel. Go to the Crispy Channel. Um, the Crispy Show on YouTube. That's where you go. It's the Crispy Show on YouTube. You can go there now and see the whole episode yourself. So if you guys are subscribed to the show, hold on one second. A lot of people are calling. Let me make sure everything is working correctly. Hold on one second. So you go to YouTube slash The Crispy Show. Yeah. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Oops, yeah, somebody's already on there now. So yeah, go to The Crispy Show on YouTube. That's the channel. It's The Crispy Show on YouTube. So you go there now, ladies and gentlemen, and check out The Crispy Show. All right? Let me give y'all the link. I'll I post the link up in here. Hold yeah. on. Let me give y'all the link so you guys can share it. Put it on your Facebook pages, by the way, fam. If you got a Facebook and Twitter, here's the link. Oh, I'm already on that, Chills. I'm already on it. Can y'all see that? Can y'all see the link? Everybody put the Crispy Show on your uh, Facebook and Twitter right now. Share the laughter. <laughs> there you go. Links are blocked. Okay, let me unblock the links. Okay, how, how do I do that? Allow links, okay. All right, let me allow links. Let me allow links, all right? All right, can y'all see them now? All right. There you go. 
So allow links. I haven't seen that Dear White People documentary, not documentary, but movie yet. I haven't seen that yet. There you go. That's the, the, the page. Yeah, but, oh, but but Crispy wants to, to give out death threats and all that. And, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if people were so reporting his ass to the feds for doing that shit. This dude is up here committing federal crimes, threatening people on the Internet. Chaos, what is she talking about, Chaos? What's she talking about? Because she's another irrelevant one. I'm going to have to check out um, Dear White People. I, I got to check it out and see what it's about. Chaos, give me the cliff notes. I, I don't like going to her page. I, I really don't like going to that woman's page. Uh, what, what is she whining about now? Uh, that, that fake, fake feminist who's not a feminist at all. What's she whining about? She's probably mad because I've I've exposed her as working with suspected white supremacists against black folks repeatedly. She has repeatedly worked with suspected white supremacists against black people. And she's very mad that I've exposed her. So she, I don't know what her deal is. Or maybe she found out that one of the people that she has egged on has gotten a lawsuit. And she probably just found out who knows? Hey, let's see who we got on the phone. What's up? Who's calling? Hey, Greek. How are you? Hey, sweetie. Who is this? I was an Afro-Canadian. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. What's the word? Um, I just wanted to piggyback off of the whole entire Raven comment about her saying she's not African-American. And um, the Breakfast Club did a show on that, and they were talking about labels. And the hosts of the show were going on saying that they didn't even know if they particularly were African, and they're all of the African persuasion. They were claiming European descent. And I just wanted to know what your take on that was. Well, those are Negroes who are just trying to deal with the system of white supremacy. When you're in, you're in a system that's unjust and a system that is very evil. It's a very evil system you're under. And it causes black people to try to be in denial of what they are because there are no benefits, immediate benefits, for them to say, hey, look, this is what I am. You are in a system that gives you nigger trinkets and it gives you benefits for throwing other black people under the bus and denying your blackness and isolating yourself from other black people. So you live in a system that rewards you for that. And it's a very sick phenomenon. And it's a trick bag that we fall for because at the end of the day, they use that against us. They use our isolation against us. So again, black folks are going to have to stop going for the immediate gratification and start looking at long-term goals. So again, I'm not mm -hmm. surprised when Negroes are saying silly nonsense in order to get a pat on the head from the dominant society, because that's what it boils down to. We know that those in the dominant society, they're watching us and we watch what we say and we tailor what we say to please the people who are giving us paychecks. It's that mentality, which is basically you being back on a plantation. But anyway, thank, thank you for the call, love. Thank you. Yes, indeed. So what they what are they mad at Antonio French for now? They're mad at Antonio French because of what? Oh yeah, Miss Braxton, that's so true. She's so irrelevant. I mean, nobody of significance takes her seriously at all. She's just, that's why she wallows on Twitter. She's just extremely irrelevant. Hmm. 
What's up, Harlem? Is Texas has successfully rewritten history, black history in the textbooks. Yo, they've been trying to do that for the longest. Yeah, that whole thing with with Antonio French and those people down there bickering, it's it's so petty and goofy. They're bickering with him and you know, that's why I look. We got some things in the works because again, a lot of people down there there was another female politician down there too who was mad at Antonio and she was mad at Jamila Nasheed and then some other people down there, they're mad at Jamila. So all of these black folks out there who's supposed to be representing down there are bickering with each other over silly nonsense, man. It's really corny. And it's a bunch of people who are basically trying to get camera time. It's real. It ain't got nothing to do with the people down there. A says she got a braided goatee. Hilarious. Did I say I went to Ferguson to promote Hidden Colors? How Everybody already knew about Hidden Colors. I didn't really have to promote it. Even when I wasn't down there, J. Cole and all them rappers, they were down there talking about Hidden Colors, dude. So I didn't have to go down there and promote Hidden Colors. They were already talking about Hidden Colors down there. I, I did look at that, Scholarly Learner. I, I saw that website. I, I didn't see the pictures you were talking about, though. I was looking for the pictures. And sh shout out to Brother Warren Valentine. They got him, man. They they gonna, they indicted Warren Valentine for like some real estate fraud or some Warren Valentine. He's a black radio host. And Warren has very good guests on his show, and he really represents a lot for the community. And they got some, sound like it's some trumped up ass charges on him that they laced on him. Uh, and I hate to see that, too. Let's see who's on the phone. What's up? Who's calling? What up, sir? It's Andre from Jacksonville. Hey, man, what's up? What's on your mind? So, man, I have a couple questions for you. Um, Go ahead. So I'm not, you know, seeing on the game. And uh, a lot of the chicks that I had met were in, like, from high school, I was in a relationship. Okay. And I'm like, when I run into him, I'm like, oh, hey, what's up? How you doing? Blah, blah, blah. And, you know, we were friends back then. And it's like, how can I actually try to spit? You know, on a level like, okay, like, back then we were friends. We're like, what's up now? How do I get over that? It's kind of like, kind of like weird. You know what I'm saying? Okay, right. I, I'm trying to understand your whole dilemma. So you... You were friends with some chicks, and now you ran into them again. Now you're trying to spit at them? Yeah, and it's like, oh, we were friends back then. It was just like, you know, that was four years ago. You know what I'm saying? Okay, I, I would say, man, with with that, if you're trying to holler at chicks that you, like, went to school with and all that shit, it's time for you to upgrade, man. You, you need to get the fuck out of Jacksonville and go to some other spots. Because when niggas start peddling back to chicks they knew back in the day. A lot of times, man, that means yeah. that you haven't done anything progressive. Niggas start doing that uh -huh. when they ain't got no other options. You're supposed to be creating options. I wouldn't be thinking uh -huh. about those chicks from back in high school. Man, you got to look forward. You need to be, you're supposed to be hollering at the college chicks, the career women, women around the career that you're in. You got to upgrade, man. You you hustling backwards, man. Fuck those girls you went to. Literally, I mean, the hell with those girls that you went to high school with. The, and and yeah. that should be some throwaway ass at this point. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. That's some shit yeah, you did when you ain't got nothing else to do. That I wouldn't even, you don't need no game for that. You understand me? Mm -hmm. That's why your, if your yeah. shit is, that's why when people go to high school reunions and your shit is fly, you go there to floss. Uh -huh. And, and let them know how fly you are and what y'all missed out on. And 
give me some of this little leftover ass while I'm here, but I'm out. I'm about to go handle my business. You go back to the high school chicks when you get in a one night stand at the high school reunion and you know, you floss it just like that episode of Martin. When Martin went back to his high school reunion, he was flossing on everybody. You dig? Uh -huh. So you got to yeah, think like that, man. You trying to cupcake with these old stuck ass niggas who stuck with you in the same spot. Upgrade, man. Yeah. Get up out of there or get around a new crew of people. If you're going to be in the same city, get around a new crew of people and upgrade, man. You feel me? Okay. Yeah, please. One more question. Though. Go um, ahead. So I was dealing with one chick and she gave me like real, like, give me a lot of cooperation, right? Yes. And um, we chilled first time, you know, which went out to we went to like cheap little spot, chopped it up, and we went back to my crib. And uh, she was acting real shy and shit, so I ain't, I ain't, I ain't hit. Okay. So I was like, all right, whatever. Like next week, you know, we gonna chill again. Um, but like the way she's acting is just like, you know, I, it seems like oh, you're just somebody cool to talk to. You know what I'm saying? Like, how do I know for, for a fact that she wanna, all right, I guess talk to me or not? I'll let you know. Now she's a shy chick. Okay. And uh, what, what is she? Black, Mexican? What is she? Uh, she was a white chick. White chick. Okay. She's a white chick. Yeah. And now, what are you? I'm black. Okay. So, you got this little white girl coming by the spot. Y'all kicking it. Y'all smoking anything? What, what are y'all doing? No, no, no. It was nothing like that. Good, good. So, she comes over to the spot. I mean, when she's at your... Do you live by yourself? Yeah, I live by myself. Okay. So, when she comes over to the spot, I mean, what are y'all doing? Looking at TV? What are y'all doing? Uh, first time she came over, we just like looked at TV. Nothing special. So she come over a few times. No, nah, she only came over one time. Oh, okay, well then you okay? You made it seem like she came over multiple times. So how long ago okay. was this she came over? Uh, this was probably two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Okay, you you talked to her since, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and is she when is she coming back over? Uh, we were supposed to chill last Friday, but she was sick. Oh, so, that's what she say. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But you told me she had like some 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 inflammatory infection. I don't know. It, it wait, 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 wait. Where was where, wait, 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 wait. Where was the where was the infection? It was something about like I guess her lungs or something like that. Okay, so it was like a throat infection or something. Yeah, something like that. Well, nigga, you know what she had in her throat? Another dick. That's what she had in her throat. It wasn't no <laughs> infection. She had another dick in her throat with a nigga who didn't let that shy thing throw him off. He had her over at the spot, giving her some instructions, letting her know what yeah. he wants her to do. She had, her, her throat was inflamed with dick. You understand me? And you need to give her some instructions the next time she comes over to your spot. You feel me? She gave you a bullshit mm -hmm. excuse, nigga. She's like, I'm sorry, I can't come over. I got Ebola. And I can't come over. You know, whatever. <laughs> She's full of shit. Next time she come over yeah. to the spot, give her some instruction. Let her know what you want her to do. And, and don't be afraid to um, make the wrong move. You got to give her some instructions. All right, man. Thanks for the call, fam. All right. There you go. My man had the girl all in the spot. See, some of y'all, man, y'all read my books and then y'all get the girls all up in the spot. And then you don't know what to do. Y'all want me to come in there and pull your pants off for you. I can't do that. Man, this nigga said she had cock flu. <laughs> What's up? Well, that's Trag. We got Trag in the room. Trag then came out of hiding. <laughs> man. Man, man, man. Let's see who we got on the phone. So they were mad at Antonio French because he has a white wife. Hilarious. What's up? Who's calling? Yeah, from um, Cleveland, Ohio. Hey, young lady. I just hey, I just want to say, hello. Go ahead. So you you you're from Cleveland? Yes. Okay. Yes, I'm from Cleveland. I just moved from St. Louis, but I'm from Cleveland now. Oh, there you go. So I want to make a comment about the whole um, Tommy situation. I was when I seen it on Facebook, I was upset because when he was like, he was you're saying threaten to kill you. Why is Darren Wilson still walking around? My thing is, black men always want to target what looks like them, but their open enemy is just out here, you know what I'm saying, tallying up bodies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and I was so pissed at him, like, really? You would come for Tariq, but, but Darren rolling around in the Charger in St. Louis, and one of my friends said a homeboy seen him 
Why, why you ain't take one for the team? What all our right. thugs and what all our gangsters said that, 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 that they ride us? Now, we, we can go. And, right, right, right. But let's be real. That coon ain't going to do shit. That's the bitch made coon. That nigga ain't going to do nigga. shit. He ain't going to pop nothing. If he ever walk up on me with a gun, I would take that shit out of his hand and pistol whip his hairline. <laughs> I would piss the whip his hairline back in shape if he ever pulled a gun on me. Let's be real. But don't don't sweat well, it, sister. Don't don't sweat it. But thank you for the call. I ain't, I'm not putting too much energy into that coon. He ain't gonna bust a fucking grape. All right. Anywho, man. Yeah, I'm taking that coon seriously is like no. <laughs> Man, man, man. But again, y'all should, if you, speaking of crispy, excuse me, family, go to um, the crispy show. Go to the crispy show page and you should like the page. The, um, on YouTube, subscribe to the crispy show on YouTube. If you have not already. <laughs> Yes, indeed. But again, I'm I'm going to be doing a lecture screening out here in L.A. I think on the fifteenth. Um, the venue, I think the guys, they got like some kind of hookup with the Nation of Islam and the Church of Scientology. We might be doing it at some auditorium at the Church of Scientology. It's somewhere they're hooking it up. I'll keep you guys posted on that. I'll keep you guys posted on that. What's up, Is Ice? It's so wheeze. Who said anything about somebody's skin tone? Crispy ain't got nothing to do. The word crispy ain't got nothing to do with no skin tone. You know better than that. What? Whose skin tone is crispy? Who said that? It has to do with your skin texture. You're being ashy. It has nothing to do with your skin tone. I don't say nothing about folks' skin tone. It's like I said, bring the crispy puppet. Hilarious. <laughs> Is so wheeze who makes nobody said anything about nobody's skin tone. Nobody said that. Nobody said that at all. Let's see who else we got on the phone. Cause I gotta go watch Walking Dead in a minute. What's up? Who's calling? Hello. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, how's it going? Hey, man, who's this? It? Yes, Tariq, who's this? Yeah, that's what's up, man. I'm, I've been trying to reach you. Wow, yeah, anyways, I have a quick question. Um, okay, wait, question wait, wait, brother, wait, wait, hold on, hold on, brother, what? brother, hold, what, brother, hold on for a minute. You gotta slow down, brother. First of all, what's your name? Okay, cool. My name is, my name is Steven. Steve, where are you calling from, Steven? Yeah, I'm calling, I'm calling from the, I'm calling from the East. The East, okay. Steven, what we do in the West um, first of all, don't call another man sounding sultry and seductive on the phone. I don't like the way you sound. Nigga, sound like you laying on your side with some flip-flops on, licking a <laughs> damn strawberry chocolate, motherfucker. So nah, first, nah, change you your tone. Like change nah, your you tone. Mean. I don't like but, you. Um, you sounding romantic and shit. I don't like niggas calling me sounding romantic on the phone, man, like you got your navel pierced or some shit. I need you to talk with a little more bass in your voice, but go ahead and say what you got to say. Yeah, anyways, I, I just wanted to find out what is your um, take on, like, a safe alternative way for, like, brothers to, like, holler at chicks. Because, like, now they're trying to pass, like, laws and stuff. Like, the feminists are trying to pass laws and stuff. So, like, what is a lot of, what is, like, a safe alternative, like, approach for, like, brothers to, like, holler at, like, sisters or just, like, any particular female in general? Because now they have, like, surveillance cameras and everywhere. And it's, like, some brothers so, like, worry. A little yeah, worry. Yeah, yeah, you like, damn nigga. So to... He has to go. I just don't like his tone, man. I don't like this nigga's tone. I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. Some alternative ways to holler at women. I just don't like this nigga. He's sounding just a little bit too sultry for me. And this nigga sound like he's in a damn bubble bath or something. I, I'm not talking to him. I don't like where that's going. 
This nigga talking about he's calling from the east and oh, what the fuck this nigga talking about? This nigga sound moist and high. I just get off my phone. I don't like your energy, nigga. That nigga sound like he a choker motherfucker. Choker chick coming out the damn gym. I know, that nigga sounds real pervy. This nigga sounds like he be circling schools one too many times. He sounded real pervy. If y'all know that nigga, man, y'all put an amber alert on your kids around that nigga. That nigga sounded like a goddamn weirdo. Man, creepy vibe. Let's get somebody else with some player vibes. What's up? Who's calling? Yo, Tariq, this Jackson from Chicago, man. How you feeling, Bob? I'm good, Pimp Sauce. How you doing, fam? Oh, man, I'm awesome. I'm awesome. No complaints, man. I, real quick, I just want to, uh, I don't know, I, I just show it and I call uh, it's called The Prophet. It's on CNBC, The Prophet. Okay. Man, you, you haven't seen that show? I haven't seen it. What's it about? Man, it's a show about, it's kind of like Shark Tank. So it's a show about small businesses. And uh, there's this guy, what he does is he helps failing small businesses by investing money. And then he takes over as the operator in the business. And it's also, man, for uh, for any, anybody that's a hustler or entrepreneur needs to check out this show. Because he really focuses on, he breaks down game on how to develop your products, how to develop the people that you work with, and how to develop a process so you ain't out here just janky. And yeah. so how you can go from having nothing and be able to go from six figures to a million. But in the show, it's, it's hella entertaining, man. It's hella entertaining. I'm going to look, you know, look that up. I'm going to look that up because that's right up my alley, man. Because I, I try to, when I get back on the road, I'm going to talk about that a lot talk about economic development and all that because that's something that we really 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 need to to get into and to learn the ins and outs of so i'm gonna definitely check it out what days do, does it come on you know what i don't know days but i watch it online you know i oh. go to like hulu.com you know i go to the different sites where you can watch you know the pre-recorded you yeah. know the show because i don't even want to see you like that but if you go like a hulu though the profit on cnbc CNBC, man, I'm telling you, this, 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 this dude is on point because the guy's a billionaire who's going in working with these small businesses. Okay, cool. I'll I peep that out, man. Thanks for the call, man. All right, we're going to check that out. I'm going to check out The Profit. The name of the show is called The Profit. I'll check that out. That seems interesting. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Man. Am I going to write a new book? I don't know yet. I don't know. Um, um, I got a couple of web things that I'm going to be working on. I got another web series I'm going to do. We're doing a drama. You know, we got the crispy. That's a web series. That's a comedy. But then I got a drama that I'm going to be working on pretty soon. The grand jury testimony. Yeah, they, what they they're trying to figure out how to not indict. Darren Wilson and to thwart the riots that's going to happen afterwards because shit's going to go down when they announce they, they announce that they're not going to indict him because they're going out of their way to not indict him. They're trying to figure out how to quell the riots that's going to pop off because it's going to go down. If they don't indict him, it's going down. And, you know, I heard that's how serious white supremacy is. They they're willing to shut a whole city down to protect one fucking suspected white supremacists, one murderous white supremacist. They're ready to shut a city down, spend millions of dollars in tax money to protect a murderous suspected white supremacist who witnesses said the same thing. He shot an unarmed man unjustly. So they're talking about taking people out of school. It's going down and so be it. So be it. You know, so be it. If they're really if they're ready to spend all that money to create an injustice, hey, the cost of white supremacy is gonna have to go up if that's the case. Oh yeah, go to um TarikElite.com to get the gear. Because it's getting wintertime, so it's it's time to get those button up shirts. In those boots, go to TarikaLeet.com because it's getting chilly outside. So go to TarikaLeet.com, get those button-up shirts, and get those boots, and get your game crisp, ladies and gentlemen.
What time is it? Okay, I got to go um, watch Walking Dead. Walking Dead is about to come on. So I got to go watch that. But we will get the music popping. We're in here heavy. Y'all need to follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter right now at Tariq Nasheed. And again, y'all need to go get all the Hidden Colors DVDs, one, two, and three, at HiddenColorsFilm.com. Ladies and gentlemen, subscribe to The Crispy Show. I got to go watch my show. I'm going to keep the music going so y'all can chop up game among yourselves. So don't go nowhere. Wait about 30 seconds, and then the music is going to get to popping, all right? So the show is going to stop for 30 seconds, and the music is going to get to popping. And I'm going to holler at y'all this Wednesday on my show.